Yeah. All right. It's January 24th. Joshua Fisher, Alexander Toss, Barack Asopoulos, DJ, Nikki, Snacks, Carter, and one of the best in the biz of our Believe in Bangles show. Solomon Wilcox joining us. Solly, the Bangles man, are they going to do it again and get it done? Hey, look, it sure looks like it. And uh, as Joe Burrow said, look, we, we kind of take it like this. We're going to be here sort of getting our at-bats for a nice period of time. Now, we'd love to be able to cash in early in Joe Burrow's career because it leaves time on the back end maybe to collect another one, right? That's somewhere along the way. Um, so for these, these great young quarterbacks that we see coming into the league, they're all jockeying for a position, jockeying for the pecking order of greatness. And I think Joe Burrow, after beating Josh Allen on Sunday, he it's now him and, and Patrick Mahomes. Like that to me, it's really about those two. And when you think about it, he's already beaten Patrick Mahomes three times that they played. So I, I think right now Joe Burrow's at the head of the class, mm -hmm. except you know, Mahomes has a has a has a championship. And Joe Burrow now knows he's got to go out and get one. Okay, so let me ask you this. We're talking about the quarterbacks a lot, but if you go back to the game on Sunday against Josh Allen, the Bengals' defense held the Bills to 10 points. What are you seeing out of this defense? Yeah, and they kept only, what, three points in the second half. Um, Josh Allen only completed, what, 59% of his passes, did not throw a touchdown pass. He did have a rushing touchdown, but yeah. even then they, they only held, they held him to 29 rushing yards. Look, the Bengals' defense is one of the most underrated groups. Why? I have no reason of, of knowing why, because this is a team that every time they played, say, Patrick Mahomes and the great Andy Reid and the Kansas City Chiefs, they've kept the score down, particularly in the second half. Lou Anaromo, the defensive coordinator for the Bengals, I think he does a good job, in fact, maybe the best job of any defensive coordinator in the league at giving you one thing in the first half that's pretty good and it's working, and then he can come up and give you something completely different in the second half and keep the score down. They have one of the um, they they have one of the best defenses in the NFL when you're talking about points allowed in the second half of ball game. So um, he's multiple in terms of his mode of attack. Um, if you ask what do they do to keep um, offenses in check, I would tell you everything, um, and that's exactly what they give you. So many things that they're so hard to prepare for. Um, and it means that they have to have a tremendously high football cue for many of the members on this defense. You can see Sam Hubbard lining up as an edge rusher. You can see him working as a spy, whether it's against Mahomes or someone like Josh Allen or Lamar Jackson. You could see um, uh, Mike Hilton at the nickel corner lined up in a multitude of positions and doing a lot of different things within the defense. And I think that is what makes them really good. They have multiple players who are so versatile, who can do so many different things in the defense and it allows them to almost like a deck of cards to be able to play whatever card they need to come up with a, a winning hand. So, so what's the card that you play against Travis Kelsey? Yeah. How do you, how do you, because great players, you can't, you can't hope to, to stop them. You can only hope to contain them, right? So how do you contain this guy? Well, you know, they have a blueprint for that. I mean, they beat them each of the last three times, and every time they beat them, go look at the numbers. And look, we all have tremendous amount of respect for Travis Kelsey. The thing about Travis Kelsey that you got to know when it comes to the Bengals, Travis Kelsey went to school here in Cincinnati. He went to the University of Cincinnati. Uh, there are some coaches on the staff, Zach Taylor, who was with uh, the University of Cincinnati when he was there. Look, um, very close to home, right? Um, but they have, when we talk about multiple players on the roster that they feel um, can match up with him, Trey Flowers is one of those guys. Remember, Trey came to the Cincinnati Bengals from Seattle. He's a longer, leaner corner. Think of him as a young Richard Sherman, a guy who can actually run. The guy has, has length, who knows how to play top-down, man-to-man coverage. And so he's like that unique card in the deck that Lou Anaromo uses against athletic tight ends. So whether it was Darren, uh, Darren Waller, whether it's uh, a Travis Kelsey, um, he's the guy. Trey Flowers is the guy. That's why they went out and drafted Dax Hill um, at in the first round when we really didn't need a safety because we feel like 
Jesse Bates and Von Bell is one of the best safety tandems you're going to find in the NFL. But Dax's um, multiple abilities, man-to-man coverage, he can play nickel, he can play dime, he can play strong or free safety. He can play man-to-man coverage against tight ends. Probably not the best on the outside if you had to put him against some of the talented receivers. But you bump him down inside, he can cover any of the tight ends or running backs out of the backfield. So that's what you saw him doing against Dawson Knox with Trey Flowers out of the game against Buffalo. So they like to be able to throw multiple. Again, you're never going to have one answer to whatever question you come up with. Lou Anaromo is not going to have one answer. He's going to make sure he's got two answers, multiple answers for every problem that could occur on the field. And that way they can change it up in terms of whatever it is they need to do to play really well on the defensive side of the ball. What a- material. Like he's not he he's been extremely successful in the biggest of stages. Like at granted they lost the Super Bowl, but they held the Rams with a high octane offense. Like, quite a little score. Obviously they stymied Josh Allen, like we've been saying they beat Mahomes three times. Does he have head coach pedigree? Oh, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. You know, I've often talked to him about it. I said, Coach, they're coming for you now. I said, you got to give us another year. How about that? Just give us one. <laughs> you know, I, so I'm always trying to just let him know, hey, we love him. We want the best for him. Um, I've, what, I, what I've told him, and this is what I would love for people to know about him, is that people don't realize how much our game has changed. And it is a passing league. People are throwing on first down. Uh, they're throwing on every down, right? They're going for it more on fourth down, right? You, so offenses are giving themselves as many chances as they can get to generate a, either a new set of downs or con- convert inside the red zone, whatever it takes to stay on the field. And because the passing game is more prevalent, you don't you won't find one team that ran the ball more than they threw it, right? Because every team um, has a higher percentage of pass plays than run plays. So it's a pass first league. So many of your best defensive coordinators, and I'll go through history just to give you some background, whether it's Bill Belichick, whether it's the Nick Sabans, whether it's Tom Landry, whether it's Dick LeBeau, whether it's Tony Dungy. Um, and now um, you have to add uh, someone like Luana Romo um, to that mix is that they start from the back to front. Uh, a lot of take Buddy Ryan for instance, his defense was from front to back. That's why Dan Marino carved him up uh, the year the Bears went fifteen and one and had that great Bear defense that put the fear of God in quarterbacks. Dan Marino carved him up because they weren't connected. They were great in the front in the box, and if you didn't hit the quarterback, guess what? It was lights out. Boom, boom, boom. He carved you up, and that's why you don't see people playing the 85 Bears defense today. It, it died uh, a real quick death. It didn't have, a, didn't have a short, a long shelf life. Well, it worked enough to win them a Super Bowl in 85, right? But it didn't have right. a long shelf today. life because of the passing game. And so that's where Lou Anaromo, um, the Nick, the uh, Bill Belichick's of the world. I even will give Sean McDermott, I'll put him in that category. These are the new head coaches they understand you've got to play from back to front because you cannot let people throw the ball over your head. It seems like the Chiefs, uh, obviously, you know, they're the one seed. They're regarded as the best team in the AFC right now. But what is it about this Bengals team that is the kryptonite that they have not been able to get over the hump these last three games? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, I tell people I don't when you get into playoffs, I don't I don't even look at the records anymore. I look at the matchups like it wasn't hard to believe that you know, Jaguars was going to beat the Chargers. I mean, it wasn't hard for me to look at that. Um, It wasn't hard for me to believe that the Giants were going to beat the Minnesota Vikings. I look at the matchups. You look at how teams match up. The Bengals match up very well against the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs don't even run the ball. I mean, they run it, but they're not running to to be the most physical team. And they're not running the ball because they're – They need to set up the pass. They don't need help setting up Patrick Mahomes to do anything. They just run it because they got to have the numbers, got to at least look like we're trying to be balanced, right? And, you know, we're paying Isaiah Pacheco, right? We're we're paying Jared McKinnick. But McKinnick got 
what, seven, eight touchdowns this season, catching the ball out of the backfield. Yeah. He's more receiver than he is runner, and he's one heck of a running back. So um, they don't. So you come in against a guy like Lou Anaromo when you're really one dimensional by virtue of the fact that you don't even care about the run game. Think about the Buffalo Bills. They don't. They don't put a lot of stock into running it. They run it just enough to keep people honest. So, so they say most of the runs are with the quarterback, right? Designed runs with Josh Allen, but they're not challenging um, the defense in the run game in a real great way. So now you get up against a defense like Luana Romo and Trey Hendrickson and, and Sam Hubbard and Logan Wilson and Jermaine Pratt, who are, by the way, one of the best linebacker tandems for my money. And you tell, and they go into a game knowing you're one dimensional. That's they start off wanting to make you one dimensional. But teams like Buffalo and Kansas City, they oblige them. They're already one dimensional, so it makes the high level of probability of Lou Anaromo and his defense and their players being more successful. And I think it puts more pressure on Patrick Mahomes to be perfect. And we saw in the AFC Championship game he was not perfect. Instead of throwing the ball out of bounds on the last possession before halftime, he throws it off. They're out of timeouts. He throws it to Tyreek Hill in the field of play, who gets tackled by Eli Apple. And then you see Mahomes over there doing this. No, no more timeout. The time is off the clock. They missed an opportunity to score. As it turns out, um, they wouldn't score much in the second half anyway. And the Bengals came back from, what, 17 points to win the game. They're down. They don't panic, you know. But let's play a little. Let's play a dangerous game here. Let's look ahead, I guess, because we're talking about these AFC offenses that the Bengals are going against: Mahomes, Allen, these high octane passing offenses. You know, the Herberts of the world. The quarterbacks in the AFC are tremendous, but it's really the physicality and the run game of the NFC teams. Which of these Eagles, Niners teams scare you more, and how do you see Lou kind of combating a more balanced attack? You mean like the Eagles and the 49ers? Is that what you mentioned? Yeah, who would you rather see in the Super Bowl? I think both of those teams are very identical. Um I I think I think from what I what I put it like this, the quarterback with the 49ers does not factor in the run game. Right? Okay. Um and because of that, you'd rather face that more traditional run style. But once you start factoring the quarterback into the run, uh, it really takes the run game up to another level. You know, it was like right around, I think, October of last year, 2021, when they really went into the more read option style of play. And since then, Jalen Hurts has taken off like a meteor. The Eagles offense has taken off like a meteor. So that tells you when the when the quarterback factors in the run game, that tells you just how important that is. So if you if the Bengals played against a rookie quarterback in the Super Bowl, like uh, Brock Purdy, who's doing a great job, by the way, and you told me most of their pass plays come over the middle of the field that they don't throw outside the numbers. They don't threaten downfield unless it's off run action. What they do is they stretch the field horizontally, and then they try to get a receiver open at that next level, but not too far down the field. While they're very good at it and they're very fundamental, they're good at making you tackle in space and being very fundamental with your eyes because they will slip people behind you. So I would say that while it's not an easy easy walk through the park, um, simply because the 49ers defense and because Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuels, George Kittle, and Brandon Ayuk, look, you know, take the quarterback run game out of the mix Give me that team that doesn't factor in the quarterback to be a runner. And that's the team that, look, it it don't mean you're going to win it. Doesn't make it easy, but it's less complicated. Mm -hmm. And what about the defensive side of the ball? Because I think these teams are pretty – they're pretty consistent with with what you're saying as well of of being pretty identical on the defensive side of the ball with 49ers and the Eagles. In terms of just the matchups for your wide receivers in the run game, what do you think – there in terms of you'd rather play it, it, it doesn't even matter i with the problems the Bengals <laughs> have on their offensive line what team would you rather play the one that's got 70 sacks or 50 sacks the one that's got four guys with 10 or more sacks or the one that's got one guy with all the sacks i mean we couldn't beat a team last year that had 
two guys with double digit sacks, right? And now, uh, do we want to play the one that's got four guys with ten or more sacks? No way. So no, the, e- the Eagles, what they're hunting with something that's rare, man. Seventy sacks is unheard of in our league. It's insane. I mean, then the guys they brought in. Sue, Linval, Joseph, like the veteran pieces to like kind of like get the depth in the in- interior of the defense. Davis they drafted. Jordan Davis, like, yeah, I mean, these maulers in the middle to allow the guys on the outside go and get there. So what I'm, they do I'm, is, still not, I'm still not sure how they got Gardner Johnson, too. So, yeah, I mean, they, 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 they had a fleecing off. Dude, and you know what? Chauncey Gardner Johnson and James Bradbury and the Detroit Lions yes. and Matt Patricia. Uh, we ought to, you ought to be handcuffed for bequeathing to them Darius Slay. The New York Giants, <laughs> you're idiots. You're idiots. You gave your best corner, one of the best cornerbacks in the league, to a team inside of your division. Uh, I mean, come on, man. I the only the Giants. Yeah, the Giants are crazy. They do a good job of building teams for other people. <laughs> yeah, I mean a lot I mean I wish they had cuffed Patricia after the line because you know my Patriots Solly he, he wouldn't have been calling the offensive plays and maybe we would have had an actual offensive coordinator in the building this season hi uh, right, hey man I right. you can't some of that stuff you just can't make it up but no these two defenses between the Eagles and the 49ers <laughs> man is like it's it's phenomenal I what I'm seeing with the Eagles defensively I don't I don't think they could be beat when they're on top of their game. They're going to have to beat themselves. And look, I, you know, I do believe if Joe Burrow, you told me Joe Burrow is going up against the Eagles. I'm like, Joe, if you know Joe Burrow, and I think people are starting to get to know him. This guy is something different guys. I'm going to tell you right now. He, he's the it guy for a lot of reasons. And most of it starts with who he is inside of here. Um, He's a, He's ruthless, man. He's a, he's like a baby face assassin. He steps up to a microphone. <laughs> yeah. he, he's smiling. He's giving you that boyish charm. Deep down inside, there's a stone cold killer. I'm just flat out telling. Yeah. Steph Curry, by well, he's also got an answer for every single reporter's question, but he's also got an answer for every single defense he plays. It's just he always has the answer. Hey, and he's and it's only a few words, and then he's got that little smirk. You know what I'm saying? It's like. It's almost maniacal. Yeah. You know, it's almost maniacal, <laughs> man. You're like, this dude is different. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I know plenty of the people that are probably listening. They bet. They try and make money on these games. But I'll tell you what. I, I bet occasionally on NFL games. I will never, ever bet against Joe No Burrow. chance I'm betting against Joe Burrow. Ever. Hey. In my life. No way. How can you? Smart. Because At least to cover. I mean, hey, not late. Hey. Did you hear him after the Bills game? He felt like the NFL bet against him, and then he told him, oh, "You got to give back some refunds." You got to. He had a line. Yeah. He had a great line for that, didn't he? <laughs> oh yeah. You know, my favorite thing. I mean, a couple more for you, Solly. We'll, we'll kind of shift gears because we were talking a little college football before you see our Longhorn. We used to be rivals, us Longhorns, and you, Colorado Buffaloes. Uh, Dion in the building, the big elephant in college football taking college football by storm, taking recruits away from major programs, really seeming, at least in the offseason, rebuilding this Colorado Buffalo program. And he's coming in hot. Let me ask you a personal question. If he comes calling for you to coach the defensive backs, would you take the job? No, I wouldn't do that because I know Prime's got that all taken care of. Look, he, he just took the defensive back coach from the University of Alabama. Nick Saban's not happy, and that's going to be his defensive yeah. coordinator. He already has um, our good friend Mike Zimmer as a senior coordinator on his staff who coached Dion when he played for Dallas. Um, Coach Zim, is a, he's a secondary guy. Um, he cut his teeth, you know, um, coaching members of the secondary. So, no, they're, they're deep there. Um, you know, I have a lot of ties to that program. I love the school. I tell people if I die and come back, uh, I'm going back there for school because that's – it's a place that changed my life. That's how much I love it. Um, it's a beautiful place with beautiful people. And uh, the, I think football, college football is right again. The University of Colorado has a storied program. People don't realize that um, one of the first African-American players there 
Uh, he was an All-American. The first All-American who was an African-American player was a guy by the name of John Wooten. And he blocked for Jim Brown with the Cleveland Browns. He later became an executive director of Fritz Pollard Alliance. He groomed Ozzie Newsom to become the great executive that he is. We've got long, deep roots at the University of Colorado for what kind of program it's always been. Um, and mm-hmm. I, I think we can get back to being that with uh, with Coach Prime. He he brings an energy to, to the table that a lot of people don't know this guy, but they're going to get to know him, and they're going to – one thing that you know about Dion, if you just look at it, everything he's ever said that he's going to do, he's done it. He's not afraid to mm-hmm. tell you what he's going to do, and he does it. He's And he's always done it with a flair, with bravado. But all the sports that he's played in Major League Baseball, I covered him when he played Major League Baseball, covered him when he played in the NFL. This guy's been on multiple teams in multiple sports. You can't find one guy that says he was a bad teammate. You won't find one. Now, listen, I I played sports too. You can find some people like, ah, that guy, ah, this guy, I don't know. Sure. You can't find one guy across all of Major League Baseball, one guy across the NFL, one guy from his college days. You can't find one guy to say he was a bad teammate. Not one. Because you know why? Because it's just not true. That's what that's how good of a guy he is in here. And this guy is going to change young people's lives. And that's why they're coming in droves to play for him. Yeah. Because they, it's infectious. When you're a dreamer and you got the energy to make it happen for you, and then you got the energy to say, I'm going to make it happen for you. I'm going to make it happen for you. I'm going to make it happen for you. That's what every young man wants. He just want to change his yeah. life and be a winner. And guess what? And write a magical story. So then later they become like disciples. They become life-changing agents as well. And uh, that's that's what we used to do at the University of Colorado. Now now we got a chance to get get back to doing that again. Yeah, well, how long do you think it's going to take? You know, like what's the window? I mean, realistically, obviously, national championship, it's a ways away, but becoming hey man, hey you know, man, the top hey, dog wait, in the wait, Pac-12. Wait, 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 wait. First of all, First of all, let me just tell you something. Everything you think you know about college football, forget about it. Everything that you've ever knew, everything that you've ever learned, just throw it out. Those days are over. The Supreme Court told the NCAA, you ain't going to like this ruling when it comes to player empowerment, player free agency, because that's what we have now. So never before has a team been down so far that gets to play by these sets of rules where you have college free agency, right? Where you get to literally, literally just put more money on the table, corporate dollars, uh, NIL collectives out in front of athletes. And then if you ever sat foot on the campus at the University of Colorado in Boulder, trust me when I tell you, you'd be like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It's so beautiful, you never want to leave. So that's why I had to stop you when you were posing that question because this has never been done before because these the game has changed. The rules are different. And if you go to University of Colorado, there is a um, IBM plant that's been there even back when I was in school. From this company spawned other startups. Um, there's companies that are based in Colorado, a company like Crocs. You may have heard of them based right in Boulder, Colorado. I went to schools with several other guys who started the company. The, uh, Twitter has headquarters based there. Google has headquarters based there. All spawn from this great giant um, named IBM. You get that kind of money in a small community like that, all going into a collective, you can build whatever kind of program you want and you can do it legally because the rules have changed. As fast as you want to. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't exactly. know oh, yeah. Overnight. Crop. Overnight. So, so there you go. I mean, I throw that out. Look, look, we always have free agency for coaches. They've always been able to sign a kid and then one month later lead a kid high and dry. Ain't nobody had a problem with that. If we really cared about student athletes, we wouldn't worry about how much money they're getting to play. You, if you really cared about them and cared about their families, 
you be saying, hey, let's take this economic class. Hey, let's learn how to start your own foundation. Hey, let's learn how to run your own company now. You know what? I think I think finance education becomes now more of a premium because it's more real time. We don't have to take a class and deal in hypotheticals. I can learn now about the stock market while I got a million dollars sitting here in the bank. Help me learn how to manage that. Help me learn how to build generational wealth. OK, if we really cared about these student athletes, we wouldn't have no problem with this. But now I question people who question, um, you know, NIL, the money is too much. Look, when you were making your money, everything was fine. When other people are making money, it's not fine. Some of these people walking around saying capitalism for me, but not for everybody else. Well, uh, I, I got a problem with that. Oh. Yeah, well, real quick and. In Boulder, you know, there's that legendary Eddie Murphy quote from the movie Shrek where he says, I like that Boulder. And people are going to start, they're going to start saying that. I like that Boulder. I like that Boulder in Colorado. The I already told, I already they're told be there. They're if be I there die and come back, if I die and come back, I'm going back to Boulder. I think I was kind of saying the same thing, right? <laughs> like, I like hey. that Boulder. <laughs> still that cross. Yeah, we're going back to Austin. <laughs> I'm still on that. Sally, thank you so much for joining us. We'll be pulling for the pain over here in Belize Studios. Uh, and thanks for all the great work. Catch you later. Man. All right, guys. Thank you for all your help. You guys are great. Um, young guys coming up, man. I really admire the work that you guys are doing. So keep it up, okay?